Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, this is Michelle in New Hampshire with Serendipity House and you're on the DIY paint page. I'm sure you know where you are. You're probably inside uh, trying to stay cool today. I think it's very hot everywhere. Super humid. I'm just trying to pull myself up on my iPad so I can see comments. Say hello when you come on, please. I have a fun project for us tonight. I don't want to write a comment. I would like to see a comment. This is the hardest part of this for me is the uh, social media work and all the gadgets thing. Well, I can see myself, but I can't see, maybe comments will come up on the screen. Okay. So let me show you what we're gonna be doing tonight. We're gonna to be using some um, Iron Orchid Designs product, products. Um, hi Barbie, how are you? All right, I see comments. Hopefully they were not gonna disappear as they're coming, they're disappearing as they're coming up. Oh, I don't like when that happens and I can't go back and see what y'all are saying. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a plain old terracotta pot that I picked up they're probably like a dollar fifty at a garden store or your hardware store, and we are going to use um, IOD clay and some of the molds. And I'll talk about these when I pull them out. We're going to use some stamps, which I have already pulled off my backing, and we are going to create this which is actually not completely finished. We're gonna add a few more details to this at the end because what I have is um, a few pots kind of like in different stages so that I can you know, show you how to go through the whole process in 45 minutes or so. Okay, and this is all painted and sealed but not quite done. So I'm excited. I love to get my, get my elbows in here. I'm gonna, um, I'm going to, um, what else do you need that I didn't say? The other things that you're gonna need, if you haven't used the, um, I, the new IOD clay yet, before you put them in your mold, you need to dust your mold with um, cornstarch, or I found flour also works in a pinch when I was out of cornstarch. And we're also, because we're gonna use the, um, the stamps as kind of a relief, you need uh, a rolling pin to roll out your first piece of clay. Okay. Here we go. Hey, Melissa. Again, if I could just figure out how to get myself into a small window here. There we go. Maybe the maybe the uh, this won't go away. I see your comments better. Now I can talk to y'all. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down and you guys um, ask questions. But hopefully, you'll be able to see every step like as if you were right here doing it with me. All right, so I have right here, because I'm gonna be rolling out my clay, rolling out my, um, my clay here, I've got a clear acetate sheet right here because I didn't wanna put it on my fabric. So that's what that glare is. All right, can you guys see okay if I'm working right here? First thing I am going to do, hi Brianna. Barbara, hello everyone, from Santa Fe. I, it's, you're gonna watch the replay. You know what, the replay will be here and then over on my page at Serendipity House and the replay is just as good as being here except we can't chat, but it'll be there. Okay, so the, um, the air dry clay, first of all, if you've not bought the IOD in a while, this is what the current packaging looks like. So this is what you want. You wanna make sure your package looks like this or you have an old batch, okay? Um, and you need to keep it uh, covered when you're not using it. So I usually take a piece out and the first part is gonna be a big flat part. And then I'll cover this back up. We're gonna use it in a minute and it's almost gone, but otherwise I usually have like a plastic bag. And um, you just knead it a little bit with your hands. And then we're gonna put it down on here. And I am going to, just to be safe, flower the top there. And then I'm gonna roll it out in like a circle. 
and I'll show you what parts these are if you haven't done this before. Now this is a cool effect because you're gonna, we are going to use the stamp to make an impression in here and then we'll see the impression when we paint it or when you wax it and it falls in the crevices. There are different, um, different ways to do this, lots of different ways. So ask questions, and if you've done it, please let us know that you've done it. Um, I don't really care what the shape looks like. I'll work with it, and we can take it off, you know, cut it into whatever we want. Okay, so there's my flat roll of dough here. Now, or dough, I feel like I'm cooking. This is like if you're baking a pie. Now, here's my stand for my... I found this to be pretty handy. I wasn't expecting this, but, I, but it actually works pretty well if you happen to have one of these. My pot's gonna sit in this and make it much easier for me to put things on. See, it's gonna sit right in there. Pretty cool, huh? I love those discoveries that you don't really expect to happen. Hey, Kristen, how are you? Oh, Kristen and She Paints is watching. Now there's some talent, girl. All right, I'm gonna take this off and hope that it didn't stick because I want um, actually both sides probably look good usually I'm going to take the nicer looking side and make that the side that's facing up so I think yeah we're gonna you can see that's kind of it stuck a little bit so I'm gonna put the glue on this side I am using, this is the glue that I like that I find works really well in these projects. It's Typhond and it's nice and thick. So I'm just gonna squeeze it on here. You do really need to be generous with the glue. And I am gonna spread it around. I know that's super generous. And I just take an inexpensive brush or your fingers, although I'm not going to use my fingers because I need them and I don't want them covered with glue. But spread it around and it's important to get it to the edges because when your clay starts to dry, it shrinks up and at the edges is where it's going to curl. Okay, so you want to make sure the edges are down really good. That's just kind of a naturally what happens. And I do get a little messy in my projects. I'm just a messy painter and a messy gluer. Um, you can paint over any of this that um, escapes, you know, squeezes out onto your project. Okay. I wanna make sure you guys can see that, okay? So I am just going to slap this right on there. Feel the glue squishing around all right and then what I'm gonna do and like I said I don't care about the shape because I'm just gonna put something over it is I'm just gonna push this down at the edges make sure it's down really well and then we're gonna stamp right into this in a minute to get that burr now I did a really thin layer of clay and I've done this with a thicker layer and it will come out differently and I can actually show you how it comes out differently. Um, on the pot that I started with, what we're, what we're uh, you can see on here that my clay is so thin that I'm, we're about to use this burr. That's what we're gonna do first. And that's what the stamp is right here. Do you see all the terracotta? Can you see? that that the um the branches and everything my clay is so thin that it actually went all the way through so if you don't mind that and i actually think it's kind of cool i left the terracotta showing if you don't mind that then use a nice thin piece of clay just so your impression works if you want something thicker where you're not going to see through the pot then just roll yourself out a thicker piece of clay all right so First thing I'm gonna do is, let's see, this is from Birds, Blossoms, and Branches. It's just one of the stamps. And I'm gonna put my bird right on there. And I'm gonna put it into the clay, push it right into the clay. 
and these clean up really nicely with soap and water. Actually, this shouldn't stick at all anyways. So I'm making uh, an impression, an indentation in here where paints or wax is gonna fall when we get to that part. Okay, I pushed a little hard. You can kind of see the outlines there. All right, so you kind of at first can't really tell what, you're, what you've got. We know that's a bird. And when we paint it, we'll know. But it's just a different way to use the stamps instead of inking or painting. Hey, Cassie, how are you? Hi, Deborah. How are you? Long time no see. Um, all right, now I have a branch and I want the bird to sit on a branch. So I'm gonna put it this way and I'll probably stamp the branch in twice, you know, do a couple different directions. Okay, so with the stamps, no matter how you're using them, the best way to do it that I have found, because I am not very steady, is to hold them with one hand like this and then use my other hand to go over the stamp and press it in. So even if you're using, if I was using an ink on this, I would be doing it the same way, holding one hand still to steady the stamp. Okay, and there's one branch and it went right off the edge. Can you guys see all this okay? It's hard to do upside down. Let me see here. The design part is hard to do upside down. Um, and then let's see, I'm going to do the branch like that, I think. So I'm just pushing in gently and you can feel it going right into the clay. Okay, so there's my two branches. Now I'm going to add some flowers. So pretty easy so far. So these are uh, all from birds, branches, and blossoms. And let's see, so I'm just gonna, this is a small stamp with some flowers on it. I'm just, I'm just actually using one of these I'm, with my thumb. You know, what's hard about these is some, they're not all to scale, which bugged me a little bit because I, <laughs> I wanted to do a dragonfly, but the dragonfly is actually the same size as the bird, so I can't really mix the two, or at least I decided I couldn't mix them. All right, so I'm just pressing that in there with my thumb. Now, it's probably hard to see what we've got going, but it's the same thing I did on this one. This is my thumb over this little piece here, and they made indentations, and I went back and painted them, which you don't have to do, but you can see what they are this way, I thought. And it was fun to paint, I have to admit. Okay, so there's that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some feathers around this. And um, we're gonna use the wings and feathers mold. So let me move this out of the way a little bit. Sit back down. Um, you know what, this, this isn't going to be waterproof, but um, Barbara, what I usually do is put my, put a pot in a pot. So like just, you're, you're just going to keep the a plastic pot inside of this one and not actually put your dirt in there. Um, it's just, I think for a lot of decorative pots, like I don't know if any of you have painted the um, painted pots before or done any of the flow blue pots or stamp those or it's just kind of good practice to tell people that it's a decorative pot and so not to put the soil directly in it okay so i just flowered my mold i'm going to take a little bit of my paper clay which by the way takes about 24 hours to dry um, but I paint this wet, so we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and paint probably paint over one that I did a couple hours ago. I think that's still damp, um, but I do the first coat of it wet, and it also it doesn't shrink very much as much as the um, other clay used to shrink. It is um, air dry, not paper. And I'm going to show you a trick when I put these on that I think makes it shrink or makes it crack a little bit less on how you put it on. 
Hey Debbie, how are you? Hi Christine, good to see you guys tonight on Friday night. Was it super hot where you are? Every place looks like it's melting or raining a lot. Okay, and I'm gonna cover my clay so it stays dry. Okay, now what I do is I use a trowel. Now if you have one that's thicker, I have a wider one somewhere, but this one works on this because these aren't very wide. Oh, you're welcome, you got your paint. It's always exciting to open up Happy Mail and have paint or fun craft things. All right, and you kind of push down as you push across it. Now these have the new molds from Iron Orchid Designs has these this great micro rim. I definitely, I used a little too much clay, and I and I save this by the way. I'm, everything's clean, so I'm pulling this right off the top, and this is going to go into my next one. Not wasting anything as long as you keep everything clean and don't let it dry out. So anyways, the micro rim is, is um, this rim right across the top, which helps you, it helps take it out, but it helps you to get a nice, smooth, even scrape across the back, which means that it's going to have um, good adhesion to whatever you're putting it to. Okay. Now to get them out, here's the easiest way. You tip them upside down. I know the rooms are awesome, aren't they, Debbie? I've learned to use the old ones, but these are just so much quicker because of that. All right, so you, you basically roll your clay out. So the silicone is nice and soft. I have used um, the clay and the silicone as well as in these same molds, only I cleaned them, obviously, um, the, re the resin. Uh, and I don't know if you guys know, that these are also um, safe for baking. But I would use, that said, I would use a separate um, mold for that. I wouldn't mix your baking in your, in your craft mold, but you see how nicely that came out and all that detail. All right, I'm gonna make a couple of these and then we're gonna glue them on here just because I kinda like I kind of like to do the assembly line thing. It's easier than gluing and then going back to this. I'm thinking also, if you guys want to pick a color, I have, um, when we go to paint this, Let's do a different color. Now the one that I did was Hey Sailor. So if, if you guys want to choose a color for when we paint, let's do something different. I don't want all my pots to look the same. Everyone's unique, right? You guys know that DIY paint is coming out with new colors, right? I am so excited for that. It's still a month or two away but it's in the works and I'm sure they're gonna be fabulous. That's all I know. Oh, oh, and I know what I wanna tell you. The pedal pusher is going to be discontinued. And so if that is a color that you love, let me know or order some from your stockist and you can make sure you have that on hand before they're sold out. I don't know what the timeline is on that. I'm sure it's not urgent, but just so you know. I just kind of discovered that color too and um, started using it and love it. So I'm gonna stock up on it anyways in the next couple months. Ooh, this stuff's so messy. All right, again, I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna roll them out. And I can tell that that one actually did not have enough flour in it because it's pulling a little bit. Yeah. You can tell when you need to kind of tighten up your operation here. The clay basically will start, you know, it sticks a little bit and it pulls on your design. All right, that's a good place to start. Um, yeah, Debbie, I'm going to be ordering more, more of the pedal pusher before it runs out, so don't worry. I just wanted, I was, I didn't know it was going to be happening, and so I wanted to let you know 
So um, I'll be ordering plenty, and I'm sure we've got a couple months before it's gone. Hey, Suzanne. Okay, now we're back to the pot here. So I've got my glue and I've got my feathers. So I'm thinking, and I think I'm gonna add some acorns too, because this was gonna be a fall pot. So we're gonna, that's not the right move. We're gonna add some acorns too. Um, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mold a few acorns before I start gluing. Otherwise I end up with an unplanned out mess. So the acorns are in the fleur de lis mold. Acorns right over there. And they've got great detail, and I almost just squeezed my glue, so I can move that aside. All right. Now this stuff is big here. Of course, I'm in New Hampshire, so this the fall stuff. This will be popular, as opposed to, unfortunately, the mermaid and beach stuff here is not stuff I can really get into because it's we don't have beaches. <clears throat> really have beaches and mermaids. I don't know who does have the mermaids, but we don't have them in New Hampshire. All right, so we just go over it with your, whoops, I accidentally just picked that one up. You know me, I'll show you how to mess up and then how to fix it. That's all, I'm all about that. I'm all about messing up. Best lessons are learned from doing things twice, right? Sometimes three times. Those come out, those are pretty thick and they come out pretty quickly. So I'm gonna make one more batch of those and then we're gonna glue. Um, I just wash my molds in soap and water, by the way, gently, uh, mostly just to get the, you know, so that you keep getting sharp images. And because I mix my mediums, I don't always use the same thing. So, hey Cheryl. How are you in Michigan? Are there mermaids in Michigan? I don't think so. Well, maybe, maybe. Summer is winding down already. I'm looking at my calendar. I can't even believe it. My, um, my daughter is headed off to college on the 30th of next month. And actually she has a pot here that I'm gonna show you. Um, that she did. It's a whole different twist on just on just doing the molds and using the stamps. Oh, uh, and I so I, I had her here uh, the other day. We were making the demo pot, and uh, she made her pot, which I have to show you. I'll show you when I get these out. But I figured out that uh, the things that you used to say to your kids that I am automatically apparently saying don't always work very well. So I said to her, I, I said, okay, and I'm gonna let you clean up now. And she, she looked at me and she's like, you're gonna let me clean up? So um, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Like apparently I used to make it, you know, doesn't that sound like a, a real bonus that I'm gonna let her clean up? She did clean up the mess, but it, it wasn't as exciting as I thought. So this is the one that she made. Hers is all sealed, she's going to Smith. And so she put, um, this is the typesetting stamp. She put the typesetting stamps in there. Um, this is the Laurel. And she painted it in, I think this is Mermaid Tail. She might've grabbed sea glass, but I'm thinking it's Mermaid Tail and Fancy Farm Girl. But that came out cute, don't you think? So there's her pot. I guess they give her a, um, they give everybody uh, an ivy at the beginning of the year and you're supposed to keep it alive for all four years. She won't watch this, so I can pretty much say what I want even if I'm wrong, right? So she's gonna bring that pot to school. Okay, so, will you guys mind if I do this upside down? So I can see where I'm putting um, all right, I like to start at the top so that if I'm going to overlap, then the leaves can go this way instead of having the, you know, the smaller parts go in the big part. Don't you agree? That's a better. So I'm going to turn over, let's see, I have two mirror image and I'm going to turn these over and glue them. Put those on first. 
on the two sides. This glue. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to just get some out on a plate with a brush, which I did earlier, and um, that all dried up on me before I got a chance to start my live. So I didn't dump any more out, but a lot of times that's what I'll do is just dump it on a plate. All right, now, and I'm gonna show you how to put these on to decrease your shrinking. It's gonna shrink when it dries, but this is gonna decrease the cracking, actually. I can't actually, I can't decrease the shrinking. It's gonna do that anyways, although it's minimal. Um, all right, so when you put it on, make sure you guys can see this. All right, I'm just gonna go around this in a, around the edge of my have other clay. When you put it on, sometimes it is habit, I think, to kind of stretch something out to make it fit or kind of stretch it to curve it. You want to do the opposite, okay? And that way it will crack less because what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it down, but I'm also going to kind of press it inward with my fingers like this. And that's going to, that is going to kind of squish the clay together a little bit more. And so when it dries out, it's not, I hope that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. All right, so let me do it on this side. I'll show you. And you're gonna make sure all the edges are pushed down. I don't know what I'm gonna do across the top yet, but here. All right, so I'm gonna push this down and I'm gonna to try to push it together well, just a little bit instead of, I, I think, Without thinking about it, oftentimes we, I, I know I've done this, and what, this is why I need to think about it. I'll try to stretch it to make it go further, to cover more. And then what happens is you're making it weaker, basically, in the middle. All right, get all of the sides pressed down. Um, let's see. I think that will fit perfectly right across the top. I mean, I honestly was really amazed by the um, little bit of cracking that I had in this last one. And it could be because I'm paying attention to that and I think this clay is just much better. So what are some things that you guys have said to your kids that worked when you were, then they were little that don't work now? I just that kind of just struck me as funny that I had, that I said that and I, I didn't even realize I said it to her that oh you can pick up and now that she babysits she well, she can use that trick too all right now let's see I'm good with the I'm gonna I am going to put glue on some of the acorns I'll figure out where they go after the glue's on small ones, small feather. I'm just going to glue a bunch of stuff so I can lay it out. I like to do this these things in threes also. Um, like, a, you know, the acorns I'll put in a group of three or one as long as it's an odd number. It's just kind of a design thing I've always done. my glue. And make sure you get the little tails on the ends here, these little stems, so that they don't lift you know, with your glue. Okay, I think, let's see, I'm going to do a feather that kind of lands on top of this. it together get all the sides down and then I am going to do some acorns There's one. now after I said that I won't be able to fit three two um, and this glue that's coming out unless you're gonna paint it right away which um, I often do 
I will wipe some of that up, but otherwise you're just gonna um, paint right over it, so it's fine. There's hardly any DIY or IOD in South Florida. Really, Christine? How's that? All right. Well, I didn't really leave much room for a feather across the bottom, did I? Let's see, let's try, let's turn to this side and we're just about done. I also, whoops, see that's upside down because I'm upside down. I also don't mind if they're not all You know, if it's not the same on both sides, that's totally fine with me. I am going to, you know what, I think I'm going to put an acorn right there. I like the layers. And I'll be gluing all this up because I will not waste this clay. This glue is thick enough that if I really press this on, it's going to stay. All right, let's see where I need this. How about... Right there. So you can really go ahead and layer this. You just have to make sure that all of the sides, and I'm, you go down before you paint it and make sure all of the sides of every mold are pushed down. That's important, otherwise it's gonna lift. All right, let me just glue up these last couple and then we're going to paint it and I'll show you how to do the wash. So I just have these last pieces. Kind of getting why Kristen sings. There's a, there's some quiet space where I normally would have music on. You don't want me to sing or do anything like that, though. We'll leave that to Kristen. All right, let me just turn this and look at it and see what it needs. It doesn't really need much. It's getting kind of busy here. All right, another feather. These feathers could be leaves though. I'm trying to think if there are, there are some leaves in the mold that we use the acorns from. So there are leaves in there. I just kind of like the, all of the details and the veining on the feathers. And so I grab those. Uh, let's do that. So you just layer to your heart's content. And I have one more feather. I'm gonna actually turn that around. Okay. Make sure to get that little tail down. All right, has anybody picked a color for doing some paint? I'll show you the pot I'm gonna paint. I don't think it's gonna be this one. I have another one that's been drying for a couple of hours. I have got so much glue on this one. I made quite a mess that normally I First of all, I'm normally a little bit more careful, but I do paint the clay when it's wet, but I do not want to spread the glue around. So I'm going to leave that there. All right, here's one that I did earlier, like a couple hours ago, so it's still, it's still soft. This is um, the wings on the wings and feathers, okay? And then the stamp in it is the um, kindest regard stamp in the middle. So I'm going to show you how I go ahead and paint this with a wash to catch the paint on the inside. Um, nobody has chosen a color though, so I'm going to go with what color? How about, do you want to do this one white and then accentuate it with wax? Here is an example of painting in white and accentuating with dark wax. This one is obviously on a board and not on a pot. And it's done with the old clay and you can see all the cracking on it. So this is just white with tons of wax. What color are we gonna do? Any requests? Hi Maddie, how are you? Gray, Melissa says a gray. All right, let me grab a gray. First gray I come up with. Gray. I have letterpress gray. All right, letterpress gray. 
spray, a brush, some water, and my screwdriver so I can open the top up. Oh, 57. I already grabbed my gray, but I do have my old 57 out. Let's start with a gray, and we can accentuate with old 57 if we need to. All right, so this works best if you water your paint a little bit. So you're basically making a wash. So I'm just going to put a tad right there, maybe a tad more. This is just water and my Klingon brush. There we go. I've got bits of clay and flour all over my shirt, you guys. Because I'm messy. All right, a little bit of water. I'm just going to mix it in with my brush. And I'm going to grab one of my favorite shop towels because they don't drop lint. And here we go. All right, so you're gonna just take your watered down paint and it's gonna drop into those crevices there. Usually what I do is paint the pot all in one color and then go back and add the details like the um, blue one that I did, which we're gonna add a couple more small details on in a minute. So this is how I paint it, watered down, it's called a wash. Okay, now you can't, you don't wanna overwork it because remember you're putting it on, it's okay if your clay is dry. This clay isn't dry and like I said, I usually paint it when it's wet, okay? I'm gonna take my shop cloth and I'm gonna wipe back the paint probably ought to wet that. Ooh, gray was a good idea. I have not done this with a gray yet. All right, so you're just wiping it off. Now the clay is softening up again, and so you don't want to overdo this. I don't want to like start flattening out my That looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. So I, I can do the whole pot too, but I don't wanna, I'm not gonna, this is the rest of it. This is a bunch of stuff I didn't wanna waste, so I put it in a pot, but um, let that dry. And then you go back to it and um, finish painting and wax it or do whatever you wanna do now here. This is the one that I want to finish up now. I went back and I put in some color, which you can do, or, I mean, the monochromatic looks kind of cool too, if you, if you just finish that with wax. This one I wanted to add some color, just there's so many options, you guys, you can make, every, you can make 10 of these and everyone would look so different. Um, it has big top on it because I wanted it to dry quickly enough for us to now put some wax on it and drop some wax into those details. So I'm gonna give you a choice again. I have dark wax and I have white wax out. So the wax is gonna drop into all, it's gonna fill those cracks right there where you can see the white. That's what the wax is good for, getting in all the little nooks and crannies. So let me grab my wax. Um, you could do the big top or you could do clear wax and then go back and do the wax, do the um, colored wax. All right, what do you guys think? White wax or dark wax? Here's the white. Maybe a little of both. Sometimes I do that too. All right, let's start with a little. All right, two dark waxes. Thank you. Okay. I like when you guys participate and uh, I can use what you want, want me to use. All right, let's see. Let's get you right in here. Dark wax, I'm using uh, the DIY wax brush. I'm dipping it in. You really don't need much, although it will wipe, it will wipe back. All right. 
right and then I want to get it I'm pushing it down right into those all of those cracks all of the you're going to notice this will lighten up you're going to notice all of the um, detail that's in the mold because it's going to be you know you have the the raised parts and the falling parts and like all the veining and the feathers okay let's grab a fresh shop towel now if you mess this up and it doesn't wipe off oh i like how it ages it um, you could go over this probably with a little bit of clear wax and lift some of this off. I think it's going to give this a really nice sheen. And we're going to finish it off by using some gilding wax in gold or in copper on the raised parts. So it just comes right off your shop towel. You can just buff it. I do I have so many brushes here so it you know it didn't really cover up the terracotta part but I kind of like I like how this is looking organic Oops. and you know what I think I'm going to use a little bit of the white also let's just see what happens let's add a little bit of the white wax so I've got a little bit of the white wax here Ooh. I'll just put it over here just to see what it does. Anybody else like playing like this? I ooh, see now I've got high points and low points. I'm gonna just buff the flowers so they stay red. I don't know, that looks kind of cool. All right, any preferences on gilding wax on the gold or copper for this color palette we have going? It's gonna be our finishing touch and it's gonna make a big difference because it's gonna go on all the high points. thinking I might use a little bit of both but I was thinking copper because I was trying to kind of go with fall colors all right so this is um, gilding wax that um, I sell this on my website as well I think I had to probably clean that finger off before I dip it in the pot hold on this is messy work so squirt bottle and shower towel And I'm even gonna lift the camera up and I'll just hold the pot up too. No, nope, my finger's still gross. Not sure if I can use a different finger because I'm not used to doing that. All right, let's see if I can use a different finger. So um, usually I dip my middle finger in. I'm gonna dip my uh, index finger in here. Just a little on my hand. And I am going to go over just to touch the high points. Let's see if I can get my. Okay. Can you guys see that? See what it does? So if you just hit the high points, which watch. Watch this, see the acorn right there? How it, you probably can't see the pattern, but as soon as I touch it, can you see, can you see the detail in the mold that it actually had like a crisscross pattern in there? And that's how you bring all of your details out. And then I'll wait till tomorrow probably and go back and buff it, but you can pick up all the veining I'm gonna open up the gold and just try that a little bit too. Let's go to the other side and do this feather with the gold. See that? 
little bit on your finger. I think I'm sold out of this right now and waiting on some. Might have one or two. But this is like the best, one of the best tools that I have, that I ever used in painting. It just changes everything right at the very end. Let me see. And then, I mean, it busts up to a shine, it's a wax. And you can just keep adding in little details until you're happy with it. All right, I use this on wood all the time. Um, Christine, I use this on wood all the time. I do, um, I do it on hardware a lot. I do it on hardware, I do it on raised surfaces on my um, dressers and wood pieces, like if there's uh, a raised molding or special molding on it, um, you buff it and it, it makes a huge difference. If you go back on my um, Facebook page and you look through some of my pieces and close-ups, you're definitely gonna see, I 90% of the time use the gold. There's gold, silver, and copper. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, I would love it if you went over to my Facebook page and gave me a like or a follow and kept an eye on what I'm doing. I'm here uh, every other Friday night for Friday Night Paint Therapy. I love it when you join and um, I love when we can chat and I'm glad I could see your comments tonight. Um, everything that I use tonight is available on my website serendipity.house. Alright, stay cool you guys. Um, enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much.